Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Reach More podcast. My name is Mari Pablo, and we're so excited to have you here as we dive in today on a topic that you're probably very familiar with if you've been in ministry for more than a week, and that is failures in ministry. So I want to welcome Dan to join us here. So as we dive into this topic, Dan, I'm sure this is something that you are very familiar with. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. I have made a lot of mistakes. Awesome. And And I've learned from some of them. Exactly. We, we, the reason we want to talk about this is we've been interviewing different people, and I think that's a common thing for everyone. Um, and it's something that can, we, as Dan can say, as Dan just said, we grow from, we learn from, and we become better from. And as long as the Lord is the one guiding it, it's a good opportunity to just be reminded that He's in charge and not us. So, yep. Dan, I don't know. In this topic, what are some things that have come to mind? Well, really, it, this kind of stems from uh, going back to when we first started thinking about what we wanted on the show. And we had this this uh, segment of the show in mind, almost like a more traditional radio show, right, where you have like this this music come on and it's kind of funny and quirky. And and you could have like this voice intro that would be like, and now failures in ministry. Um, <laughs> dun, dun, and, dun. <laughs> but every time I was editing the episodes uh, and I thought, oh, this would be a good time. It really felt like it would interrupt the flow of of the sharing and almost um, not quite have the right reverence for the way people were sharing because they were sharing a whole story. And as I thought about it more, I was like, you know, I don't really want to interrupt them uh, like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So this has been in the back of my mind of, okay, we we do want to talk about failures because they're so instructive or they can be so instructive. And um, it's helpful to go back and say what went wrong there so that we can avoid it in the future. And I've had a few of those that just, have stayed with me for a long time and yeah. uh, make me really, really, uh, I don't want to say cautious because they don't really make me cautious, but they make me wiser. Uh, and that's one of those things you only get wisdom, I think, sometimes through failure. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but hopefully I can I can share those failures. You can share those failures so that other people don't have to make the same mistake. That's really where this came from. It's not like I had some big screw up recently in ministry. But didn't you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I did. I guess it always happens. Um, the, uh, so one that comes to mind for me, and uh, rather than preface, I'll just jump right in. So my wife and I are involved in a ministry at our parish, and um, it is preparing couples for marriage. And so rather than do, rather than send couples to a pre cana retreat that's hosted several times a year by the diocese, Mm-hmm. Um, our parents decided years ago they wanted to do something in-house because they just thought that would do a better job of helping people integrate with the parish and connect and build a community there. So uh, it's about six or seven weeks. And uh, there's usually anywhere between like uh, six and 10 couples who show up. So it's not a very big group. Um, so it's it's a, another couple who facilitates kind of a, an older like deacon uh, mm-hmm. and men and Deacon and his wife who act as a mentor couple. And then my wife and I, so, um, I was like really thinking more about, okay, how can I reach out to people? How can I connect and have my own apostolate while I was doing this mm-hmm. and, um, thought I really want to intentionally evangelize, right. To set mm-hmm. people or to, to get people in a group and, uh, like make it clear to them, Hey, I'm going to help you learn to be a disciple, make disciples evangelize. And so um, I started kind of like getting a a feel for like who in this group looks like they would be open. And I'm kind of already violating the thing we talked about last week that it's not to write people off. Cause there were some people I was like, I'm not inviting them. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So there were three couples who, who seemed like they would be into it. And uh, I asked and they were, um, they were definitely open. Um, I think two of them were one, I didn't have the right number, so I'd never gotten really in touch with them. Um, but two of them said they were open and then I think a hurricane came. Right. And so it mm, threw off our plans. Like, mm-hmm. And when I reached back out to them, the, uh, the moment had passed and that like there was, there was enough time between the end of that pre cana group. And when I spoke with them again, that they were like, well, you know, I'm pretty busy right now. Now's not a great time. And, um, they, it just never happened. Right. Mm -hmm. And as I've thought about that and and asked myself like, okay, could I have done that better? I realized I was asking them to a very big commitment right away. I was Mm -hmm. asking them to essentially like join what would have been a reach more group, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, you're going to, 
you don't even really know me, right? We've, we've mm -hmm. seen each other six times. Um, would you like to come be a part of this, this Bible study at my house? They'd never been to my house. They never knew me outside of this. Yeah. And um, what I would do going back is um, I would just like be friends with them first. I would invite them over. I would hang out with them. I would go you know, to dinner with them or, or go to coffee with them mm -hmm. um, because I didn't know where they were, right? I was ready to ask them to commit to following Jesus in an intentional way. And I had no idea what their mm -hmm. relationship with the Lord was like at that time. And yeah. so as I'm sharing this, like, was it the worst move? No, not at all. Like it was, they yeah. showed some interest. They were open to it. Um, but I think it was enough of an ask that they felt a little intimidated. And um, I wish it, I would have um, really just met them on a human level first. Yeah. I think that is one of the big mi failures in ministry. Not failure. It's like, we're just so excited to walk with people. Yep. It comes from a good place. Like, yeah. We know Jesus and we want other people to know Jesus. And so we're going to talk to people. That's a hundred percent. I've done that multiple times, like facts. <laughs> At the same time, I think this is where in the reach more training, we go over the threshold of deepening conversion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the thresholds are so good because it does open my eyes to like, I'm trying to have conversations over here, but they're like still in the trust phase. You know what I mean? Like they're way yeah. in the beginning. Right. Um, and I've learned this with my family members. I learned this with my sister. Um, my sister recently mentioned a couple of years ago that she has felt judged by me. And it's because I was trying to just like push her to something that she's not at yet, you know? Yeah. Um, and I wasn't, I really wasn't. I was just caring for her. She's like, I know you're not doing it on purpose, but it's coming off bad. And I was like, oh, okay. So like, I think it is something of, and all of us here listening can kind of attest to this. I think one of the best things is just, you know, that's why I think we bring up like coffee dates so much or, you know, go kayak. I don't know. I just mentioned kayaking. I like kayaking. But like go <laughs> invite them over for a game night. Like a game night is way less more, less intimidating than like a yeah. full on Bible study, you know? Um, and just me. Depending the on the game. I mean, if are. it's like, if it's like Dungeons and Dragons, that's, that could be a little more intimidating. <laughs> I'm gonna That's be honest. Probably... I, I would not attend a Dungeons and Dragons game night. So you're right. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, sorry, I, I derailed you. You were saying like meet them where they're at. Yeah, that's a big thing. Meet them where they are, and I think all of us, again, in our enthusiasm and excitement, which is a good thing, and we need to just be mindful and allow. Yeah. Like, okay, Lord, like. What should I talk about? And and ask them about their interests and see, get to know the couple or see, get to know the person in front of you to see what, what is something that they would enjoy and then go from there. So yeah, that'd be really I, good. Yeah. I think it's, it's essential to be able to ask and answer the question at what stage is this person on the, the, or at, rather at what threshold are they on the, mm -hmm. the journey of deepening conversion? Mm -hmm. Um, and then why do you think that? So why do you think this person trusts Jesus or the church? Mm -hmm. Why do you think this person is curious, is uh, is open, is seeking, or is a disciple? Yep. Um, and it, um, so if you're not familiar with those ideas, my guess is if you went through Reach More, you are. But if you're not, then you could go through Reach More or you could read Sherry Waddell's book, Forming Intentional Disciples, which yes. is outstanding. It is available via an audio book, which I actually, it oh, was cool. for me. Yeah, that was one of those books I just had a hard time getting into. Like I knew mm -hmm. it was important, but it was for whatever reason, I was just always busy. And so I, I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to this. Mm -hmm. And um, that was you know easier. What? That me. might be a smart move. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Unfortunately, Sherry doesn't read it. It's somebody else's voice. Oh. Um, yeah. I always like it when the author reads the, the book. Yeah, yeah, that's way cooler. The other thing you can do, though, is I don't know if you do this. Do you listen to audio on double time? No. So, yeah. I know you, you can speed it up. Yeah. You can Depends go how slow or fast the person is. I have done it. If they're right. like, like I wouldn't speed up. Actually, Father Mike's voice sped up is hilarious. That's but funny that you, you brought that up because I was going to say it's impossible with him. You can't do it with him, but it, no. it is funny. He speaks too fast. <laughs> you, yeah. There are probably people who are listening to this on, on, uh, on double time right now. Uh, that's good. That's kind of so cool. We'll just slow it down. You're like, ha. You're not gonna... <laughs> uh, so, so how about yeah how about you 
yeah, going back to the topic, I think, okay, so backstory on, on Mari Pablo. I was a youth minister for many years, and then I was a teacher for like eight years, and I was a campus minister at a high school level. And so I was in charge of um, prepping kids, like teenagers, to lead retreats. So to lead small groups, we had to like go over a lot of things, kind of a lot of things and reach more of how to lead a small group. So what do you have if you have this person in um small group we would like do roles actually so i would assign each person like a different like you're arguing annie and you're si- like shy sam and you're yeah, derailing yeah. john you know um it was just really fun i really I, I enjoyed working with them hardcore one of the things that i learned i am a type a personality like i just want to say call it what it is i'm a type a personality i like to have my things even though i'm not the most organized person in the world and i'm definitely not like my schedules and when it comes to like me running retreats, like I, I want it to all work out exactly as planned. Um, and that's a good thing and can be a bad thing. And I remember we, there was like a skit occurring in one of the retreats, you know how we love skits. And one of my kids forgot his t-shirt. And when I tell you, it was like an hour before the skit and the retreat center was like in the middle of nowhere. And I, I lost it. Like, I just lost it. Like, I lost my cool. I started yelling. It was so bad. Like, it like, <laughs> I had to pray about it after. I had to like recognize that I totally failed. I had to apologize to the kid. Like, and it's been like a life lesson of mine of like, don't go back to the t-shirt you know what I mean so like when things don't go my way or when things don't go as planned I take a deep breath and I'm like no no not the t-shirt like it it was like the smallest thing that had a massive impact on my life um and I think the lesson there like I failed because I was so caught up in my plans and my way that I lost track of just loving the person and meeting again it goes back to like meeting them where they are and just like being mindful and so if you're planning a small group and the person forgot snacks or the person didn't read the bible verse that you told them to read or they a lot of them didn't do something like it's very tempting to just be like you guys are a bunch of slackers you know what i mean um but we can't (laughs) We shouldn't do that, even though I use that word way too much in my life. Um, but it should be something that's like, okay, like what's more important, right? Are we just going to yeah. make it work? And are we going to be flexible and open to listen? Maybe that person had a really rough week and you being super hard on them, like they're not going to open up to you because you're being so hard on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so that's been something that I've learned. And if I'm being completely honest, it's still a little hard for me. So like, if I'm like on a consulting call and the person didn't do the homework, I still get a little bit like, come on, you know, but I need, I, I need to, we need to love the person first and foremost and just be open. And sometimes those times are an opportunity to say, well, can you just tell me about your week and how are you doing and what's going on in your life these days? And yeah, so that's been my don't be the t-shirt <laughs> opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are some ways, and we can both answer this, what are some ways that we in our apostolates become more focused on the shirt than the person or the plan than the person? Yeah. What comes to mind for me is I'm imagining if somebody – let's say they're launching their apostolate and they have something scheduled, Mm -hmm. right? People are going to be late. Your, you know, your kid's going to get sick. Your food's not going to arrive on time or you're going to burn it or something like that. And those are the kind of things that if you look back through your life and think of other gatherings, other events you've planned and those things happened, they were still good events Mm -hmm. and people still had a good time. And it might actually be a a more humorous memory because of the the mishaps mm-hmm. as a result of that. And so I think we can see those things as some kind of like silly, holy interruption. And the Lord's saying like, hey, 
I'm going to show you that I've got this mm -hmm. and it's not your perfect plan that is going to lead somebody to conversion. It's my love. Mm -hmm. Because really what like what's going on, especially on those retreats, is people are moving towards conversion. And that like when we get frustrated, then we can interrupt what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which we don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like as, how many people have we talked to and they said something like, oh yeah, we were scheduled for, to do our, our men's group and we went there and the door was locked. Yeah. Right. Or they so sent the, they... the food to some other building or yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like all over the place. Right. Like yeah. I've, there's a, there's a, a local pizza chain around here and they have multiple locations. And one time we called to order takeout from a location that was 35 minutes away when we have a location that's four minutes away. Oh man. And so we show up and they didn't have our pizza at all. Oh. And we were like, uh, we called and they're like, which restaurant did you call? Yep. I totally did that uh, the other day with Sokai sushi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's fun. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of things can be the t-shirt. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of things be the t-shirt for me. I think one of the things is when people go off task or like they didn't, like, like I mentioned, like they didn't do the assignment, they didn't do the thing. Yeah. And sometimes if you're open, those have led to like really good conversations that were unplanned. And so we do need to be a little like just flexible, even with like content or with things that we've planned. Right. To be like, okay, Lord, like, maybe we should just talk about this today. Or, you know, like, just not be so, like, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. No, like, okay, Lord, I guess we're doing little things a little bit different. And that's fine. And that's great. I think if if my wife were on this show right now, she would um, have a lot of stories about me uh, being given opportunities to be more flexible and not want to stick to the plan so much because I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Once I get it in mind, I'm like, well, this is the plan. We're going to stick with it. We're going to do it. Yeah. And I have a, a little bit of a harder time pivoting. So if you're listening and you're like, well, it's a good plan. I don't want to pivot. I'm with you. I like, it's a, probably a great plan. A lot of mine were awesome too. <laughs> and you just go with it. Right. Like, you know, uh, there's going to be, I remember I was planning a retreat for, um, parish leaders so dres youth ministers and the priest who was supposed to come up to do this called me the day before to say um hey my doctor is refusing to allow me to travel because i have like a neurodegenerative condition and it was like oh okay and there's nothing you can do about it right so i have a hundred people coming to this retreat and no retreat like there's nothing I can do. So oh, I'm just man. frantically calling like and thinking, OK, you know, I, I want to get a priest because what people were looking forward to. They'll have an opportunity yeah. to go to confession with somebody they don't know. Getting a priest like that is it's impossible. Not, yeah, that's every like, single one of them have a million rough. things to do. Yeah. Um, I was able to find find one. I found a, a priest who was a part of an order who was also doing I think he was in campus ministry and school had let out. So he was he was oh, very wow. flexible. Um, and everybody was very gracious because they, they understand the scenario. Cause I had advertised, I was like, Hey, we're yeah. using this priest. And then when people show up, it's a different one. And I had to say like, Hey, he had a health concern. This priest is, is awesome. He said yes, last minute, but also like, please know he had no time to prepare because of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and everybody was cool about it. Uh, I think people had a great day. Nobody, nobody, you know, left feeling like they got cheated out of a good retreat. Yeah. And in, in like a lot of situations when things don't go as planned or like there's a last minute change, someone always, there's always someone every time I do anything in, in retreats, it's like they don't know the schedule and they don't know what the original plan was. And they're not going to notice a lot of things that you're freaking out about, you know, like they're not going to yeah. notice that the t-shirt's different, you know, like no. it's just like done, you know, yeah. so it is kind of cool to just, okay, Lord, like, what do you want to do? And just be open. And we talk about the Holy Spirit a lot. And I think, um, I don't think we talk about the Holy Spirit in like a very tangible way enough. And I think a part of just like 
okay, being led by the Holy Spirit and is is that openness, okay? Like, what do you want to do? And when things go wrong and when things are different, okay, Holy Spirit, like, bring me, give me your peace and guide the conversation and be a part of all the things that we're doing here, right? And I think that needs to be, like, a big thing. Yeah, so. I agree. Um, a phrase that I've heard from someone I work with recently that I really like is the um, – the thing is never the thing. Mm. Meaning like the thing that, that people say they're upset about, or perhaps that we think we're upset about is rarely or n- never the real thing. Like, were you upset mm. about a shirt? No, you weren't. Mm. It wasn't the, it, was, it wasn't the shirt. It was I probably was something like, that my kid didn't like prioritize it and didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Care of it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they're like, f- I know for me, at least there's always something related to control and mm-hmm. me thinking like, Oh, I I no longer have control over the outcome, mm-hmm. and I never had control over the outcome anyway. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. when you're talking about a retreat, right? You're you're inviting God to show up and inviting kids to listen, and those are two invitations that you have no yep. control over the response. So yep. we do it's our true. best and move on. Do our best, and, and it, to like, yeah, just like understanding the beauty in the simplicity of like. If you're in ministry, it's because you know the Lord and you just want to care for the other person. And yeah. like, that's it. And that needs to be evident in big ways and in small ways. And if we're really caring about that, then like, I don't know, it's it's just like a, I, I was just in Detroit and visited Blessed Solanus Casey. And which is kind of cool. If you don't know about him, look him up. He will be the first um American born priest that becomes a saint if he's canonized, which is kind of epic. And really? one of the main, yeah, isn't that Damn. interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Augustus Tolton is, you know, on the way to sainthood, but Solanus Casey is a little head. So I'm like, it's like a race, but <laughs> they're both awesome. Um, but one of the things that he did, he was just a porter. Like he would open the door for people and like welcome people and, he would play the violin for people, even though he apparently sounded horrible playing the violin. <laughs> but like, he did it with heart, you know. And I, I looking at his like stuff, like all his clothes and stuff. He was a short man, you know. <laughs> I was like noticing. I was like, yeah. Um, and all these different things. And it was just, he just did it all with love. And I think, with failures, with whatever, if we're just doing things with love, like. And that sounds cheesy and that sounds whatever, but really that's all it is. Like ministry is just allowing yourself to receive God's love and being able to love others. Well, yeah. the end. like there that's, we go. that should just be. And if we're doing that, then there is no failing. Yeah. I mean, the, we are handing out invitations to the wedding banquet. Mm-hmm. so the the failure would be in in not handing it out mm-hmm. and so it's um and this might sound like we are almost being too um carefree with the gospel but mm-hmm. i think the scripture voice that i would point to to indicate otherwise is uh when jesus told his disciples um when you enter a house um i'm paraphrasing here when you enter a house um Offer them your peace, and uh, if they are receptive, then your peace will come back to you. And if not, shake your shake the dust of mm-hmm. that town mm-hmm. and leave. Mm-hmm. And he's reminding us, like mm-hmm. people will say no, and mm-hmm. they're you not will be rejected. rejected. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, like this is Christianity isn't like this, uh, like some bubblegum pop religion where everything is awesome and we're all. It's not Barbie Land, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's suffering it's hard uh uh, suffering and great beauty and joy and deep friendship and meaning uh with all of that so i mean that the good in my life has far outweighed the bad yeah um but the bad is there nonetheless or the Mm -hmm. the struggle is there nonetheless Mm -hmm. i think that's a good place to wrap up yep i agree friends thanks for being with us awesome to record another episode for you and please know that we're praying for you Bye. Friends, thanks for listening to another episode of the Reach More podcast. I think some good takeaways for us this week would be first, 
to think about the people that we are ministering to or that God is asking us to and uh, begin to ask ourselves, where are they on their journey to a deeper relationship with Jesus? Are they learning to trust him in his church? Are they curious about faith? Do they show some sign of interest? Are they open to conversations and learning more? Are they seeking intentionally? And are they already living as full-fledged disciples? And then if once you ask those questions, the next one would be, why do you think that? And what evidence is there in their life that that's where they are? And the, so that's our, our first takeaway for this episode. And the next one would be um, not to get too upset when we lose control over things. So. Whatever our plan is for a, a meeting, for a retreat, for our apostolate, when it doesn't go according to plan, know and remind yourself, God is in there, He is working, and He can make good come out of anything. So thanks so much, God bless you, and look forward to being with you for the next one. Peace.